So I tried turning my iPad Pro into a data science machine and the results were pretty interesting. Hey everyone, if you're new here, my name is McKay. I'm a current data analytics student and on this channel, we explore the tools, strategies, and technologies that can help us develop and build up our skills as data analysts, data scientists, and as well just help us be more productive with our coding overall. So today we're gonna to be looking at the iPad, specifically the iPad Pro, to see if we can use this as a substitute for our data science work. So I've had the iPad Pro now for about a year and really it's one of the best pieces of technology that I've owned. Before I've just, I've always been using MacBooks, I've always been using like a Windows computer, school as well. But when I got the iPad, I wanted to really look into it and see that if I could use it as one of my daily drivers in data science and to be able to do things such as my homework or kind of do like machine learning algorithms. I mean, Apple's always boosting that this really is more than a computer, which to me, I was like, there's no way that a tablet's gonna be a computer. But I wanted to put it to the test and see that if it could actually do a lot of things that a computer is doing. So in the video, we're gonna be covering three main things. First, we're gonna be looking at the ability to code on the iPad, and then we're gonna be looking into the hardware of an iPad compared to like a MacBook, or a Windows computer, and then as well, we're going to be looking at it from a daily use standpoint. Let's jump into those three things right now. So the first step that I wanted to actually do was to look into like different ways that you could code on an iPad, because an iPad's a little bit different where they're not on the same operating system, and the iPad actually runs something called iPad OS, where Windows runs Windows OS and then Mac runs Mac OS. It's completely different and it didn't have, from all my research, it didn't have all the same functionalities and the same type of things that you would expect on an operating system. So I looked actually into the app store to see if there were any apps that would allow me to do things such as access files and be able to work with files and code. So I did that and I actually found a lot of different applications that you could use some being paid, some being free, and being the broke college student that I am, I decided to go with free. What I did is I downloaded one called Carnets, and Carnets essentially is just a replacement for Jupyter Notebook, but on the iPad, and it just runs on your machine in the app. So I decided, hey, I like Jupyter Notebooks, and so I'm just going to try this out and see what's up. And so after downloading it, I decided that I was gonna put it to the test by trying something super simple, linear regression. And linear regression is just a really simple, basic machine learning model, statistical model. So I figured, hey, if it can do this, then maybe we'll look into more advanced things. If it can't do this, then it's gonna be like, hmm. And keep in mind, this is the free version. I don't think I'd ever really wanna pay for like a premium version of something to code, especially where coding is free, just like on a MacBook and everything. So I didn't wanna be spending more money than was necessary. And so what I did was I ended up just importing NumPy and importing Pandas, and then I tried importing a library called sklearn, which is a very popular machine learning library, and I tried importing that and I got an error, like right off the bat. I got an error saying that there's no such module. So I looked into the documentation of Carnets and I found that there really wasn't, unless something was a pure Python package, you couldn't install like outside packages. And I thought that was kind of weird. So I tried using their pip install to install the actual package. It didn't work, I got another error. I tried using NumPy's polyfit, but it didn't really seem to give me exactly what I was looking for in terms of being able to do a little bit more complex type of stuff. And then as well, I tried importing a different library called stats models, but I was getting the same errors that came with sklearn. And really when we're looking at the ability to code and the ability to code on an iPad, it was getting a little complex. Like I couldn't really do anything without trying to find a workaround where just on a laptop and on a Windows or a Mac, it's straightforward really. Just download it and you're good to go in five to 10 minutes where I spent probably a couple hours trying to find a workaround for this. And so I thought to myself, okay, if I can't even code, what kind of data science work am I gonna be able to do on the iPad? A lot of different solutions that were on the internet involved using things such as Raspberry Pis or going on the cloud and just the, la the iPad wasn't really like an actual machine that you were going to be coding on. You're gonna be using something else, something outside to create the coding environment and to be able to code. So it just seemed like a lot of workarounds up front just to even get started with coding and data science. And then another thing I looked into was connecting to databases since database work is so crucial in data science work. And 
Really, I couldn't find anything besides connecting to a MySQL database, but then again, that involved even more workarounds, so it just seemed like something that was gonna be a little too complex for what it was. And so if we're comparing the differences on coding ability between a computer and an iPad, I would definitely recommend just sticking with a computer on this one. iPad doesn't really seem to be able to compete there, and it just isn't really I guess an iPad just really isn't meant for coding. So the next thing I looked at was the actual hardware. So the touch screen, the keyboards, mouse, everything that comes in the hardware, the RAM and memory as well. And honestly, it looked really nice up front, but then as I was starting to use it and I was trying to code in it and everything, it got a little complicated. So the one thing that I actually love about the iPad is the touch screen. And the touch screen on the iPad, it just makes it a lot easier to kind of scroll through apps and as well to be able to use the actual iPad compared to like trying to use a trackpad on a computer or anything. But I ran into a problem when I was trying to code that the touch screen really doesn't help you when coding. The touch screen made it a little bit more difficult, honestly, to code and kind of like point my finger right in between everything. And it really made it a lot more difficult. And especially the mouse support isn't fully functional, I guess. It's not like a mouse or like a trackpad. It's a little bit more jumpier to things as it like tries to lock onto things. So trying to use the mouse was a little bit more complicated and it made my coding experience not as great. And really trying to attempt some of that data science work ended up being a nightmare. Like I tried doing some of my homework on it and I just had to switch back over to a laptop. Since the iPad actually doesn't even come with a keyboard, you're gonna have to end up buying a Bluetooth keyboard or buying a smart folio case, which runs a couple hundred dollars. It didn't really make sense to me. I mean, I just used, I connected a Magic Keyboard to it. While I like the Magic Keyboard, I like connecting that and I use it daily. It just wasn't the same as coding on a laptop or coding on an actual computer compared to coding on an iPad. The last thing I looked at with hardware was the actual RAM and the RAM on an iPad only goes up to six gigabytes. This is a little bit different compared to, for example, a MacBook where the minimum RAM is at least eight gigabytes and it goes all the way up to like 16 and 32 gigabytes. And as well on top of that, the storage space, usually if you're using an iPad, you're gonna have a lot of photos, apps, different things going on with iPad, where a MacBook might just be for coding or a Windows computer just might be for coding. So I ran a storage, actually I had a lot of different apps. I had to delete a couple apps to be able to make it kind of work and everything. So that was kind of a frustrating struggle there. And then another thing was that the iPad only has one USB-C port. So if you wanna charge and plug into a monitor, for example, you're not going to be able to unless you buy some adapters and everything. So this makes it a little bit more difficult to code and to kind of do everything in your data science work. The hardware on the iPad is an absolutely game changer and it makes it a little bit more difficult to actually code and makes things a little bit more, makes life a little bit more difficult. So if you're getting it for the hardware, laptop, computer, way better. The last thing that I want to look at was how easy it was to use in like daily tasks and different tasks that you'd be performing. And the iPad actually is a lot easier to use than a computer when it comes to daily tasks, just due to the touch screen and being able to organize and plan out your thoughts. And where your computer is kind of your livelihood as a data scientist, you're going to want to make sure that that helps you be more productive, be more efficient, and as well do the things that you're wanting to do. So it's a lot lighter and it's a lot easier to carry around and being able to organize and take notes as well on the iPad is a lot better than using a computer. So in this category, I definitely say this is better than a computer, but I don't think that it can really compete on the other places. So if we look at the three aspects that we've gone over, it's safe to say that I'm not going to be using the iPad as my new daily driver for data science. I really think until Apple really updates the OS and updates the abilities of an iPad and the capabilities that it contains, I really don't think it's going to compete with Mac OS and the experience on it just really doesn't make sense. And it's not really something that's viable for somebody who's in a technical field such as data science, machine learning, engineering, anything like that. I mean, if you're a marketing student, it might make more sense, or if you're doing just emails all day, it makes a lot more sense. But in these technical fields, you're really just better to go ahead and buy like a MacBook or a Windows computer where the cost is gonna be 
about the same if you're just buying like a base model MacBook. Anyways guys, thanks for watching. That's it for this video. If you like this video, be sure to check out this playlist here where I have a couple of data science topics that I talk about. And as well, you can be sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching guys. See you in the next one.